For some context, I am a preschool teacher, and this happened one day at work. I was outside on the playground with my kids for recess, when I noticed someone staring at us over the gate. Our gate is in street view, but is rather long and steep. You need to walk a good 20 feet down from the sidewalk to stand where he was. He was really fidgety and acting all strange. His face was covered with what I assumed to be scabs from some kind of drug use. I asked him if I could help him, pretending this was totally normal as not to risk escalating anything. He asked for a pamphlet, which I didn't have, but I offered to write his information down and reach out, anything to get him to leave. He accepted, and I reached for my phone, when he made a fast movement to unlock and enter the playground. I told him he needed to step away, as my kids were out, and I can't let him in without an appointment for a tour. He said he would do his own tour, now, and he continued trying still remaining calm and cherry to keep my kids calm who by now were taking notice. I told him that we were full for today and that he would have to come back another time and book an appointment. Well, can I just play with them for a while? He asked me. I told him I cannot allow that and that we were just about to go inside anyways and he stared at me with narrow eyes. Without turning away, I told my kids we were having a fun race to the gate on the opposite side of the playground from him, and whoever won got a prize. They forgot about the strange man, and ran like hell for the prize. The man seemed extremely irritated, but he decided to back down. I told him to have a nice day, and watched as he walked away, looking into every window up the driveway as he did. I'm sitting in my class when my kids are taking a nap, and I'm so thankful that he didn't get his way into the playground and hurt them. Not the worst thing to ever happen, but definitely scary. I'm now going to file a police report, and I just hope that he never comes back. So this happened a few weeks ago, and I am still so terrified. I am a 12 year old boy and I live in Georgia. I live in an apartment and a pretty safe part of town. The only scary point that has happened to me before this was a criminal living in the very same block as me. A few years ago he set a fellow resident's car on fire in the middle of the night. He was of course arrested after that. So this story starts in a local park that doubles as a huge playground. A lot of kids and elderly people like being there. One day I was out with my friends and we were spinning on one of those spinning carousels and we were talking about video games. Suddenly, I spotted an old man. At first I didn't think much of it since a lot of elderly people hang out around there but I just had this weird gut feeling about him. He was making me feel what I can only describe as unsafe. But I thought it was just a spinning carousel giving my brain a hard time because I am always dizzy after that ride and stopped paying attention to him. A few minutes later, me and my friends decided to leave the park because we were getting super bored. While we were walking, I see that same man. This time his steer is fixated on my best friend. We don't think much of it and decide to keep walking. We get close to him and he quickly steps in front of us and says, Hey kids. My first thought was that he was going to ask for directions because that happens a lot in this part of the town I live in. Many people often get confused about where to go. He follows up with, Would you happen to want some of my goodies? Being the idiot that I am, 
Instead of walking away, I ask, what goodies? He goes silent and starts staring at me. A few moments of silence and then some of these here drugs. He opens up his coat wide and reveals pockets and pockets full of tiny Ziploc bags filled with some sort of powdery substance. My friend quickly and silently says, no thanks, and we start speed walking towards my house. I live in an apartment very close to that park, and my friend lives on the same block and the building just one door away from mine on the fifth floor. He then starts following us in a rather quick manner and almost shouts, what about some candy? I got some candy too. At this point, me and my friend start darting towards our block, not even looking either ways while running across the road. Luckily, there were no cars around. Once we got to the block, we felt much safer. There were a few people sitting on the benches, and everyone in the block knew us. So if this old man tried anything, we knew we would be okay. I told my parents the moment I got home. They called the cops immediately. And to this day, the guy has yet to be found. But I just wonder, what would have happened if he caught us? I grew up in a safe and beautiful part of town. All of my neighbors were within five years of my age. There wasn't a moment I didn't have a friend to hang out with. We were even lucky enough to have a park within a couple of blocks of our neighborhood. Given the safe nature of our area, we were all allowed to walk and spend time at the park alone. One time I remember being with my best friend. We were around 10 years old at the time and decided to make our way to the park per usual. This time, however, we got a really bad vibe and heard a man screaming in the background. Hello? We were both as tiny as could be, and luckily could fit under this 12 inch part of the playground where no one could see us. Within seconds of successfully making it under and hiding under the area, the man yelling appeared. We could see him, but he didn't see us. He said, I heard you two girls playing. Where are you guys? Come on out. As he started looking through the tubes, slides, and the rest of the playground, we lucked out. He didn't find us. We have never been so silent in our lives. After a few minutes of him gone, we made a run for it. We generally walked along the road to the playground, but we were aware of shortcuts through other people's yards. This time, we took a dash through the neighbor's yards. As soon as we hit the road again, a card pulled up along the side. It was the same man. He asked us to get in his car and that he would take us with him since we were so young. We declined endlessly. We kept on walking and he slowly followed us with his window down and he begged us to get in and let him drive us. We eventually walked up to some random person's house and pretended it was one of ours. We understand now that this was the wisest possible thing to do, but at the time we were only 10 and all we knew was that we needed to get the crap out of there. After pretending this random house was ours and going to the front door, he left us alone. We made the dash to my real house. We never told our parents. We probably should have. We are now both 22 and to this day, we both still bring it up every now and then and discuss how poorly things could have gone and how we could have met a horrible fate. When I was around six or seven, I had an awesome friend who lived in the apartment complex right across from me. She and I used to go roving around and go on adventures, helping the older folks in the complex get around and stuff like that. It was in the 90s in a small town 
So our hardworking single moms didn't worry too much if we got off the bus before they got off work. They told us to always stick together and be a team. Don't talk to strangers, stay close to a section of the complex, and never go to the playground at the top of the hill by ourselves under any circumstances. Naturally being around six or seven and eight or nine, we were pretty obedient and followed instructions well until one day when they were way later than usual. We were bored out of our minds and thought it would be a brilliant idea to take the massive hike up the hill and go play on the playground. So up we went and all was well, at least for a few minutes. My spidey senses started tingling and when I turned around, there was a man standing there. He didn't look creepy or anything. Just a normal younger dude wearing a burgundy sweater and khakis. I looked around to see if he had brought his kids up or something. But he didn't have any. I grabbed the swing I had been pushing my friend on and made it stop, whispering to her that there was a man behind us. She looked behind us and stood up quickly. It's okay. You two can keep playing, he said in a soft, quiet voice. My friend spoke up. No, we're just leaving anyways. She grabbed my hand and we began to walk away. If you want, I have a jungle gym across from my apartment. We can go play there, he said, moving closer to us. We backed away, still hand in hand, both of our red flag sensors going wild. I like watching you two play. You're very pretty. He continued, moving in longer strides. We booked it, taking off down at the hill at a breakneck kid's speed. We looked behind us to see him chasing us, and we both started screaming our heads off. A little more than halfway down the hill, we saw both of our moms standing by their cars, talking and smoking. And when they heard us, they immediately started sprinting over to us. Apparently the man realized who they were, and he started taking off across the vast parking lot back to his apartment. Our mom scolded us something fierce and explained to us that what happened was the exact reason we were to never go that far from our neighbors ever again. When I was at elementary school, me and about three other girls were playing at a park at recess. Out of the blue, a man just came up to us from across the field where his car was parked on the street, and he asked us if we wanted to see his puppy or something else that was incredibly stereotypical. My mom had previously warned me about the exact situation so many times, and I knew that this was bad news. At the time, I was maybe six or seven, so unfortunately, I was much more of a follower. The other girls started to follow him without hesitation, so I decided to follow as well, trying to convince the other girls that we should turn around right now. Thankfully, one of the supervisors noticed and intervened. I don't think they did anything about it though, other than take us back to the park and tell him to leave us alone. She should have got his license plate and called the police. This happened so long ago, and it is still so crazy to me how I'm just living a normal life to this day. But in only a matter of seconds, my life, my family, my friends, could have been completely changed, and the outcome could have been different.